All right, so if you're feeling down, try to put the phone down. A new study from the UK says it's social media and depression highly connected, especially when it comes to teenagers. Our 90s medical expert, Dr. Camilla Sasson, is here to talk about the study. Thanks for coming in. So this isn't real new. We've known for a long time that uh, extended social media use isn't good for teens, but this study was a little bit different. Yeah, you know, I think a few of the, the biggest findings from the study were that about 40% of girls and about 20% of boys were using social media more than three hours a day, and girls were almost two times more likely to develop depression-type symptoms because of it. And I think this is the first study that really shows there could be some common pathways that not only parents should be looking at, but also teenagers, too, about what could be the link between social media and depression for yeah. the first time, really. Yeah, and depression, of course, leads to all kinds of other issues, lack of sleep mm -hmm. and not doing so well in school and all kinds of different things. Yeah, you know, and it's interesting because this study actually really looked at sort of the idea of, is it the social media that could also be contributing to, let's say, poor sleep? And poor sleep is definitely linked to a uh, higher likelihood of developing depression, but also more importantly, oftentimes kids have phones right next to their beds sure. at night. So it's the last thing that they do before they go to bed, first thing that they do in the morning. And I, what they're finding is that just that screen time actually will um, really disrupt the circadian rhythm and can also disrupt that melatonin as well too. So now you're actually adding sleep deprivation in to this whole mix of depression symptoms. And you can also have kids that are maybe getting bullied or harassed online, yeah. so they're going to bed very anxious, very stressed out at night. Huge, huge effects on, on that quality and quantity of sleep that they're getting every night. Yeah, so you can tell the kids to put the phone down. That usually doesn't work very well. I know that. <laughs> yes. uh, so so what, what, do you, what, what should parents do about this? Well, you know, one of the big things that um, you need to do is really just think about, okay, well, you know what? The, the phone is part of their lives, right? So what can I do as a parent to mitigate some of this? So one of the things is buy an old school alarm clock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so so that way the, the phone is not right next to their bed necessarily. Um, it gives you a little bit more control as well too, being able to keep it downstairs maybe away from them so you can kind of watch how much they're using it. Limiting social media use in total, so one to two hours a day, mm -hmm. not at night, one to mm -hmm. two hours a day, and even thinking about maybe not doing it after dinner time, so that way it gives them a chance to kind of unwind and not get involved in some of the drama that can go on at right. nighttime. And then of course there's also filtering software as well too that's available, so parents can actually monitor online usage, um, thinking about you know what what's going out, what's getting posted, and what messages are going out as well too, because sure. I think a lot of kids don't realize what happens now is going to follow them as well. It seems like they are starting to get it though. A lot of teenagers are. Mm -hmm. They're they're using it less. I know my own kids are using social media a lot less. That sort of thing. So there's hope. Yeah, and I think you know the more t parents can do about really teaching their p their kids about these sort of long term lessons about what social media means. I think a lot of kids, you know, their brains are developing. They don't really understand that what's happening right now is going to last forever. Right. <laughs> right. So there's no such thing as a picture that only pops onto the screen for 30 seconds and oh it's yeah. gone. Right. It's yeah. it's there forever. And so there's a few lessons that I think parents should really be thinking about longer term with their children as well. So teaching them about right versus wrong. So what what's okay to post online what is sexting what is online mm -hmm. harassment what is considered cyberbullying and what are some of the things that you shouldn't be forwarding yeah. that can actually be an area where kids can sure. get into trouble very quickly and then face to face communication i can't tell you how i have a nephew who's 17 years old and we went to visit him with his friends and it would drop him off so he could hang out with his friends they're all sitting there on on phones so they're sitting together <laughs> on their phones, texting each other. Yeah. <laughs> so, so having that conversation about, gosh, you know what? It's important to connect with people in person and to have those developing relationships. I think that's important. And then, of course, just good feedback about what body image is, what's good self-esteem. Sure. That was actually the reason that a lot of girls were, were feeling depressed was because they were having issues with body image, yeah. seeing things that were posted online about themselves, maybe judging their appearance about the way that they're acting, the way that they're dressing. And that's not just for girls too, it's also for boys yeah. as well. But I think just giving them a better idea of what is good positive body image I think is gonna be helpful, not just now, but for life as well. Yep. Parents get involved, it's very important. Yes. All right, Dr. Camilla, thank you, appreciate thank you. it.